Hi everyone, it's Jaden. Welcome back to my channel where I share information on health, fitness, optimization, and inspiration. On today's uh, video, I'm going to be doing a another uh, reassurance video on uh, a very popular and scary symptom that I do keep track of the trends on my channel and the the shaking, muscle trembling, twitching, the that group type of videos is the most most viewed, most commented, most questions thrown at me, and um, seems like the most uh, feared and um, you know the scariest and most common as well. So lots of interest and kind of momentum on this subject or on this symptom. So I want to do another video. I've done quite a few on it at this point, but um, I think this video I will be doing about the the triggers, the common triggers that I had for those specific trembling, shaking, muscle twitching symptoms. And I'm going to go into more detail than I do on my other ones in this area of the topic. So just another way for you to get reassurance. I know going through this type of health crash and anxiety and health anxiety, um, which is caused by this type of health crash, it really helps just to hear other people talk about their experiences and find the common ground. And especially when somebody has fully recovered, which I have now, I've been fully recovered for nine months, um, to when they talk about their experience and you find similarities, it gives you, you know, like reassurance that you are going to be better, you know, um, and you are going to recover from this. Again, first thing to do, I strongly advise you to check in with your own medical professional. I am not a medical doctor or a therapist and I do not replace one for you. Please check in with them. Get checked out at first. You know, you definitely want to rule out all the possible serious health conditions before you kind of move forward into, um, you know, self-help and things like that. So I highly recommend you guys doing that first. Um, if you have ruled out all the serious conditions and you've narrowed it down to anxiety, stress-related, chronic stress-related health imbalances and health crashes, which is exactly what I went through. And under that umbrella, it includes, you know, panic attacks, HPA axis dysfunction, adrenal fatigue is a common one, um, hormonal imbalances, uh, burnout, and uh, anxiety disorder. And it also caused me to have health anxiety, which is you're like constantly thinking that you're, you know, might die from this or that, or you have this serious illness and you just, you know, part, it's, it's a family of anxiety disorder. So, um, if that's you and you're doing your research, um, great, because on my channel, there's so much information that I put out on it and I've been getting better and better response and better and better feedback by the weeks. And so I'm very happy to continue to share this part, um, of my journey and, my experiences when I was going through the recovery for two years. All right, so let me jump into the video. That was a long, long introduction. Um, so the triggers for my trembling and shaking and twitching uh, type of symptoms were if I felt exhausted. And when you're trying to come back from a health crash, your version of being exhausted is very different than a normal person. It takes almost nothing for you to feel exhausted. So you have to gauge it within your kind of levels, like when you're in this health crash. So if you're recovering from the health crash, depending on which phase you're in, again, I came up with this five phase concept. Check my videos out on that and you can you know, know what I'm talking about. But the earlier the phases, the deeper you're still in the crash. And so your kind of gauge with how much stress it would take to exhaust you is gonna be much like less. So just it's in the beginning, it almost takes nothing and you'll just be like floored and exhausted and crashed out. Um, as you progressively get better, you have higher and higher, higher intolerance until you're back to you know normal and optimal again. So you kind of have to gauge where you're at to look. So, but if, let's say if I was in phase like one or two and have very low ability to handle stress, almost none, no abilities literally I could go to my refrigerator and I remember this back when I was like bed bound I could go to my refrigerator to get water and the cold air from let's say the refrigerator or the freezer hits me 
it would just send me into like massive panic, massive stress, massive symptoms, heart palpitation, like just everything would come on just by a simple temperature change. All right. So this trembling symptom that I experienced, um, one of the top triggers for me was when I would do anything like just over what I can handle. So in phase one, barely anything would trigger this. So I was having, I mean, I was having 24 seven trembling, shaking, twitching, like symptoms. Okay. It was very scary. Um, again, there's the external trembling, there's the internal, there's a kind where you can't see, but you feel the buzzing. There's the kind, there's all that kind. Now I have videos on specifically, specifically the type of the symptom. You want to check that out, but this video is about what triggers it. So number one was overdoing anything and that depended on my phase. So by phase two, I was, you know, had more tolerance for stress. So it would take a little bit more stress to get me to have those symptoms and so on and so on, phase three and phase four, you know, you get you get more resilient and you have more resistance towards that type of triggers. Okay, so stress, overdoing something was number one trigger for those things. And what I noticed was that sometimes it could be, you would have that trigger and then you would have those symptoms. Sometimes you could have that trigger, like you had a traumatic or stressful event in the morning, but you don't quite get the symptoms of the trembling right away, but then in the afternoon, it's like catches up to you, okay? So that also happened to me. So if you're feeling like, wait, but mine doesn't come on right away, or if mine comes on later, but it, or, or mine comes on right away, it doesn't come on later. Well, I've had both. So, you know, it's, you don't have to be afraid like, or at least in this situation, it's not like if you just have one, then it's not it. it, it I've had both. Um, so another thing was like being overly emotional internally or verbally. So if I like talk too loud, which I naturally tend to like project my voice, I would start getting tremblings. I would shake. My muscles would like act up, twitch. Um, if I got overly emotional in internally, like if I was feeling angry or like something scared me or shocked me. And back when I was recovering the first few phases, everything startled me. Like the most gentle interaction with like, I don't know, my dogs or something like just out of nowhere, I would just be like, <gasps> and I would just go into fight or flight mode. And that totally triggers it. So if I, you know, got scared or watched a scary movie or, you know, heard a knocking that, I wasn't expecting or anything that like made my emotions jump or like if I got really angry at something or if I got in an argument or if I was encountering like a stressful social situation that like let's say I couldn't find parking um, in a parking lot that that could just send me into uh, trembling muscles and they happen a lot in legs arms hands I had it all in my face my tongue my eyeballs twitch my eyelids had twitch at some point my lips around my nose inside my stomach, um, odd places in my like joints and stuff. I mean, everywhere. So, uh, raised emotions internally or externally were also major triggers for this. Um, I've also found that if I ate too quickly and like my body suddenly have to digest like a bunch of food or like if a high dose of sugar just hits my blood, um, that will trigger the shaking and the trembling as well. Because again, that's like another form of stress that you're putting on your body. So next, too much physical activity um, when you're not ready for it yet. So again, that falls into the category of doing too much, but just in another interpretation, which is like, if you're not ready to really like take on a full regiment yet and you do it, uh, it'll send, you know, it triggered my trembling and the shaking. Um, the same thing goes with sex and masturbation. If you're still in the earlier phases, sex and masturbation is very harsh on your system because your system is so weak that even performing sexual activities, which is very, I mean, obviously pleasurable or masturbation, it is a form of stress when your body is weak. So when you do that, 
at a level that exceeds your tolerance at the time, again, depending on what phase you're in, that also triggered the tr tr trembling and the shaking and all that. And the final one is anticipation of something um, exciting or scary or uh, you're nervous about. Like, uh, when I was still in this health crash and I there was a period where I tried to go back to play playing tennis and tennis is something that excites me a lot I love it uh, one of my love and passion of my life I do it constantly before I had this health issue but I had to stop but when I thought I could do it again just the thought of like I'm gonna go be able to play was very exciting to me on the way there I started getting massive trembling and shaking that I just was like okay can't do it today so the anticipation of something so it's it's again that excitement that nervousness that anxiety and that it's gonna you know trigger these symptoms so uh it, i'm probably missing some detail somewhere i feel like that's very detailed and like a broad range of what i wanted to cover Feel free to ask me questions in my comments, send me emails, join my Facebook group. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so to help me grow my channel. I've got some really exciting stuff, guys, coming up. I've been um, putting a lot of energy into creating a full-on detailed video course on my recovery. Um, so as I complete that course, I will let you guys know more and more. But just know, so you guys know that it's in the works because I know my video my videos have been very helpful. Um, but I think to really get my information across sometimes and to like, for those of you who are really serious about like recovering and taking in uh, how I did it and want to reference me, I'm going to make a full course on the details and with better, you know, camera and shoot, just make it like nice for you guys to really be able to take it in and hopefully be helpful for you guys and of value for you guys. So. I'm definitely working on that and looking at like I'm like a month out of like actually having that um, ready. So I will keep you guys posted. But, uh, you know, meanwhile, go ahead and continue to uh, send me questions because I'm sure I, you know, it's, it's hard to cover every feeling and every mindset, you know, on on this type of health crash. It's just so detailed and there's so many like little things. So. If I'm missing something that you didn't hear that, you know, you want to get reassured, go ahead and, you know, send me a message down below in the comment section or email me or um, join my Facebook. There's lots of great discussion going on in my Facebook, uh, Facebook group. So, uh, and I'll leave all the details in the description box in this video. All right, thanks so much, guys, and um, have a thriving weekend, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.